um, I hope that everyone joins me. On. Yay! That was really, really interesting. Um, and now it's time for questions. Since um, Nando is here, um, you can just raise your hand and, um, and, and then, you know, unmute yourself and you can go for it. Um, you can also, of course, um, post it in the, in the um, chat here because we are live. But um, anyone has any, any questions that want to ask? Raise your hand. Uh, Laurent has <laughs> yes. started. Go just, for it. just one thing quick. You, you, you wrapped up saying that uh, you thought that the community con con could contribute uh, in terms of programming language abstractions to actually ease um, approaches to differential privacy. Can you elaborate a little bit on what you have in mind? So yeah, that's a really good question. So the, I think that the field is really struggling to A, uh, creating some easy abstractions that, that can be used uh, by the means of compositions to understand what is the final uh, output A, as well as privacy preservation that is derived from, from those outputs, as well as uh, um, a really understanding how to uh, cast some more complex problem, like an optimization problem of interest, into something that it's meaningfully preserving some, some properties. Um, so uh, take as, uh, as an example this uh, linearization problems that we, were, uh, that we were experiencing. So how can we, can we have a mechanism to automate this type, of, uh, this type of issue here and this type of linearization techniques? And how do we do that in a way that it's meaningful uh, with respect to the privacy primitives that we want to adopt? Um, so I think that the, the community here has a lot of experience in building frameworks that uh, can derive uh, provable, uh, correct results. And uh, the differential privacy community has yet not adopted a unified framework for uh, thinking about correctness of the programs, thinking about compositions of results in a certain way uh, when adopting those privacy primitives. Thank you, Nando. I think that Helmut has his, his hand up. Helmut, what's your question? Right, thank you. Um, a lot of the problems that you were talking about have a kind of a, a clear political uh, kind of context. And uh, um, it means that you actually, not just to have to prove the theorem that what you're saying is correct, you actually have to get the message across. Uh, have you thought about how to uh, explain this to uh, the general public and, and what the implications are and what can be done? Thanks for the question. Um, this is a really great question because there's, there's actually two questions encapsulated into that. Speaking with policymakers and speaking with the general public. So with policymakers, um, so we, we, we are collaborating and reaching um, uh, several nonprofits. Uh, so we're working with uh, people at the Urban Institute and uh, uh, we're also working with companies that uh, are independent um, uh, consultant uh, of the US Census Bureau um, and, and we're reporting essentially the, the outcomes of uh, those projects uh, to them so to, to understand what are the effects uh, for the larger and broader, and broader uh, society. Um, and so while there is this aspect here which is challenging per se, there is another aspect, which is that of communicating this type of results um, in a meaningful way. So not in a scary way, but in a meaningful way to the larger public. And there are two sub questions here. So A, how do you communicate them? And B, um, how do you also uh, let people feel reassured that this technology can uh, preserve privacy? And that's important. Um, while also retaining some certain uh, you know, degree of fidelity and, 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 and fairness in a strictly non-mathematical language. And so this is a challenge that we haven't mm, took yet. We haven't started uh, you know, even thinking about it yet. And it's not only my group that has not started thinking about this. It's, uh, uh, I, I believe it's the broader um, differential privacy community that has not yet started uh, thinking about it. There are some tendency to uh, communicate uh, some of those results in blog posts and so on, but there is yet no a unifying strategy. So I'll actually welcome any uh, you know suggestions. Thank you, Nando. Um, any any other questions? So uh, this is Gene here. Uh, 
Well, first, you, you might want to uh, stop sharing your screen and we can see each other instead. <laughs> uh, the question is, uh, uh, do you think this might have some application to the problem of uh, establishing uh, uh, voting districts to, uh, while av avoiding uh, gerrymandering? Yes, um, there is. It's such a study that we are doing right now. Um, so, so firstly, um, basically, the, the, one of the results that we have is that any uh, non uh, nonlinear problem uh, solve for uh, this problem of uh, uh, disparate impacts, and this allocation problem here is a very discrete problem. Uh, when you're redistrict, uh, redrawing the districts, it's a discrete problem. And so um, inherently, as you move this decision boundary just a little bit, uh, might cause some um, high, basically small perturbations, might cause some high uh, errors. And this is really related with robustness in machine learning. And so we are studying uh, this aspect here from that lens, from the lens of robustness. Um, However, I'm not entirely sure that, that redistricting data is at the current moment uh, done. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not entirely sure that redistricting decisions at the current moment are done with privacy preserving data. So they might be done with the actual data. So the question over there might be, what about the statistical errors that are inherent to the data collection problem? Are they affecting the decision process itself? And so that's actually an interesting question that would be really interesting to study. Thank you, Nando. Um, I have a question. So if I, if I understood your, your um, talk properly, this reminds me uh, a lot to some of the issues that, that uh, there are with the predict and optimize um, um, approaches where you're trying to first predict some things and then optimize based on, on the results of the, of the prediction. Um, which basically uh, realizes that sometimes is is still it it doesn't matter so much the accuracy in general. What you really want is the accuracy towards the things you are optimizing, right? So if I understand properly from from your talk, in some sense the data needs to be abstracted first for accuracy, right? Is a is a particular kind of of uh, post processing that you need to do to 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 make sure that you uh, do accuracy properly. And then for fairness, depending on the structure of the problem, the, the optimization in fairness, so because you're trying to optimize, right? So in some sense, you're changing your model, you're changing your objective. Um, first, you want to be accurate, then you want to be accurate and uh, fair. So uh, in some sense, if I get it right, you're trying to have an abstraction of the data that is the best for the, for the problem, for the, for the model that you're trying to optimize upon, right? So um, is that is that correct? Is that uh, did I? That, yeah, Maria, that's that's actually an excellent point because you could see this as a bi-level program. But um, the one of the the goal though of data release is to being able to answer a numberless queries, it, and thus there are it, there are an infinite amount of uh, exactly. Subjects. So so then that's what you were talking about. Um, that if you the same as we have had uh, managed to, to do some kind of generic solvers, right? That that you can then uh, modify. You might be able to to um, uh, define abstractions that cater for particular properties. So rather than that having a, an objective function of a particular kind, what you're trying to do, you know, if it's distribution of people, you know, you're trying to count, or is it uh, if we can figure out what is exactly in generic terms that you're trying to achieve, or I'm trying to figure out how to do these abstractions in a way that is uh, more or less generalizable, right? That you, in the model, you say, this is what I'm trying to, to optimize for. And therefore, this is the data that I need to be uh, fair, equal, up, down, a convex, non-projected, um, and see whether you could do things like way. Anyway, I, I, yeah, uh, yeah I, I agree with you um, with your comment. I think that's a really um, smart comment because um, essentially here and, and I completely agree with you. So we, we, we are in need of those abstractions. So I think that theory needs to come first because it tell us uh, what are the general properties that we need to take care of in order to build those type of abstractions. But once we have that basis, then uh, we should be able to get those abstractions and uh, essentially only release maybe just pure privacy preserving counts without really taking care of this post-processing step. 
So who cares that those counts are meaningless? They, they violate the constraints of the data, but then um, those programs that we're gonna run uh, on top of it, they are going to be meaningful with respect to the application of interest. I completely agree with that uh, uh, general sentiment. Mm, thank you, that's, that's really interesting. Any other question, final question before, before we have to go? So might it be interesting to, I see I'm in the dark here, but that's all right. <laughs> might, might it be interesting to, uh, the shadow knows, uh, might it be interesting to think about uh, this in the context of distributed multi-agent problems where different agents have access to different databases and want to trade off uh, privacy with, uh, with efficiency and optimality? I agree. Uh, yes, I, I completely agree. So. Um, we have, a, we have a study, um, I think last year uh, at AMAS, where, where we started tackling this challenge, but it's a, it's, it's a much larger challenge. And uh, I, I think it's a, uh, it's, an, you know, it's a really, really important question. There are many other challenges that are arising when you're thinking at this distributed and multi-agent problem, because there are, there's not a silo of data, there's uh, multiple data sets and thus the uh, if the property of the data that you want to preserve are global, so the union of all data sets, some entities might be repeated in uh, multiple data sets. And so you, you really need to think smartly at how those these privacy implications uh, of one agent, so of the release of one agent might affect that of the other agents. Um, so I think it's a really, really, really interesting question. And uh, my group has started working in that direction, but this question here, it's, uh, it's a much broader than uh, the work that we have done. Thank you for the question. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for, for uh, attending and for the questions. Let's give another round of applause. <laughs> Fernando, for thank a you. really, really good, uh, I really particularly like how you, you uh, gave a very good intuition for each uh, of your um, you know, uh, fundings and the formulas and the theorems. It was, it was really good. Well done. Thank and, you so much, uh, my pleasure. <laughs> pleasure. And then I give it back to Laurent. Yes, absolutely.